October the 21st by Ikpa Chibilsa Darwin Street was like most streets within the New Auburn estate. The road branched at two directions in left and right angles both at the beginning and at the end of the street. It was covered with tiny granite chippings that brought up dust each time an automobile passed through. The street also had lampposts scattered at different points along the road. While other streets had houses opposite both sides of the road, Darwin had a single pile of houses lined directly opposite a long stretch of wooded trees. The estate management had deliberately afforested the area to combat the effect of climate change and the loss of forests. It was Friday, October 21st, a day that was just like every other day of the year. Residents who worked 9 to 5 had returned to their homes to savor the pleasure of another weekend while those who worked night shifts trickled out of their apartments like ants emerging from a hole. The moon was full and bright and it hung just over house 21 and appeared as though it was surrounded by a halo. The sky around it was dark and clear and its stretched umbrella was not interrupted by the usual twinkling stars. It was on nights like this that made the lampos feel like they were not important. Several thoughts ran through Jan's mind as the water from the overhead shower grazed her soft, light chocolate skin. She had moved into house 21 for barely a month and was already enjoying the serene environment. She particularly enjoyed the quiet evening walks which she mixed up with a little bird watching, things she never imagined herself doing at the condo she moved out from. She smiled. There was still something missing. She needed a man. She turned off the shower and watched closely as a drainage hole sucked up the water that had collected on the immaculate floor tiles. She smiled again. Then she reached for her towel that hung by the side of the wall and dropped water off her body. Outside her apartment wore a deceptive old look. It didn't look like the other bright colored and clean houses on the street. Perhaps it was because it hadn't had a new occupant since the last ones died two years ago. Or maybe because the outside lawn had not felt the touch of an experienced gardener in months. She still liked the place anyways. It was a modern two-room bungalow with a sitting room, a dining room and a moderately sized kitchen. It was one of the cheaper houses too and that was an incentive too good to be turned down. Janet chuckled when she stepped into her dimly lit bedroom. How will someone even think that this house is haunted? She stopped to admire the spacious rectangular room kept alive by a faded blue paint. The wooden floors still glinted polished brown in contrast to the white ceiling which was stained with red patches. She walked over to her wooden wardrobe and flung the doors open. She loosened the bathrobe she had on and let it slip off slowly while she contemplated the dress she would wear for Andrew's birthday party. Andrew was one guy Janet developed a crush for, ever since she transferred to Westland College. He was tall, dark brown and had cute black eyes, just like Janet. Andrew lived alone off campus and he was one rich kid who had his way around women. Janet knew she had to impress him. She picked out a black velvet dress from the wardrobe and placed it over her nude body. It was a sleeveless gown with a low neckline and a long slit. She nodded her head in satisfaction and moved to lay it on her neatly arranged bed 
by the corner of the room just beside the window. She looked over the window and sighed. The weed at the back of her house was growing fast. Then she returned to the wardrobe and replaced the bathrobe she had left loosely on the floor and without a ceremony slipped into her underwear. The floors creaked under her feet as she went to sit by her bedside. It reminded her that the house was not as flawless as she wished. She sighed ran her slender fingers through her hair and shot a glance at the mirror by the wall. Cold chills ran down her spine when she looked and saw no reflection. What the hell? She jumped on her bed. She could feel her heart thumping while her fingers trembled as she frantically searched for the light switch by the wall. She found it and flipped it on immediately. As her eyes adjusted to the brightness, she leaned on the wall. It was strangely ice cold, causing her slender body to shiver violently. She leaned away, then slowly went for her clothes while avoiding the mirror as carefully as possible. She slid the dress on and turned to the mirror again. Nothing. It's not happening. It cannot be happening. It's just a glitch. The mirror is bad. She rehearsed, trying to calm herself down. She was already panting when she dashed for the door. Remembering she wasn't with her keys, she hurried back to the room and grabbed them from the bedside table. The two bedrooms were directly opposite each other and they both connected with a passage that led to the sitting room down to the exterior. It's fine. I probably didn't say clearly. It's all in my head. I just have to drive away, leave this place, maybe grab a drink or two and calm myself down. Janet was greeted by a stale, dry air as soon as she stepped outside the apartment. She could hear the cry of crows from the porch on her rooftop and the persistent hooting of owls from the woods opposite her house. She rushed to her car, a Nissan Primera she had taken from her aunt's garage. She tried the keys on the door just to discover that she had taken the wrong keys. The thought of going back to face a reflectionless mirror seeped into her head and caused her to shiver in fright. The wet grass under her feet made her uncomfortable. She knew she had to get back in and get something to put on her legs. She glanced over at the parking space of house 20 and noticed that her neighbors weren't in. The occupants of house 22 had moved out only a week ago but a single lamp still shone from within the house. She thought she saw smoke coming from the chimney. She sniffed. It smelled like burning flesh. She turned back to the entrance of her apartment, counting her steps as she approached. I should call someone, she thought, and stopped, then turned back and headed to the car. Luckily, she had grabbed her phone when she left the room. She flipped open her phone book and dialed the first number that came to her mind, Sandra. The line rang a few times before it cut. She tried again, but it didn't connect. The signal was lost. She looked away from the phone in despair. The light from house 22 was out. How in God's name? She heard a thud from the woods. It was very loud, almost as though a tree fell. She turned swiftly but saw nothing, only darkness. The street's lampposts were out too. She hurried back to the owls as the owl's hood grew louder and louder. Her curly black hair was already ruffled from the incessant running of her hand through it. Her feet were muddy and wet and her breath was stuffy. She flung the door open and stepped inside only to be greeted by a continuous creaking sound coming from the direction of the other bedroom. 
she felt very cold. Her entire body was covered with goosebumps. She tried her phone again and there was still no signal. It was only 8.21 p.m. The party starts in 39 minutes. She slumped down to the ground, her arms wrapped around her knees. Calm down, Jen. Calm down. Calm down. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. The sitting room seemed vaguely familiar under the dim table lamp. But she wasn't going to push that into her mind as well. She needed to get her keys and her shoes. The cricks suddenly stopped and the birds fell silent. She rose quietly and headed for her room, stopping short at the door as something flashed past. It left the room so quickly that she saw was only a flash of bright light. The birds suddenly began crying again. Her head was spinning by the time she stepped into her room. It spun so hard that she almost tripped. But she held herself and picked up the keys from the table. As she ran out of the room, something dropped on her cheeks. She didn't stop to check what it was. She only knew it was squishy and smelled of dirt. Her car had suddenly disappeared from the spot where it was. Her head grew heavy and her feet grew light and lighter. She could hear whispers in her ear and a very thick presence around her. She tried to block her ear but the voices were still loud. Her vision blurred and her feet could not move. She attempted to scream but no words came out. Then the world spun so quickly before her eyes and she landed with a thud on the soft, muddy ground. Janet stretched herself over the soft surface. The lights filtered in, casting its gaze over her eyelids and causing her to use the back of her hands as a shield. She gradually opened her eyes to notice that she was looking directly out of the window. The thoughts of the previous night gradually sank in. Her eyes widened. She was in her room, lying on her bed. She still wore the black dress from last night and her feet weren't soiled. She quickly adjusted herself only to face directly opposite the mirror. She screamed. Jenny! Jenny! Calm down! What's going on? Mike! The street cleaner had made his way into the room when he heard Janet's persistent scream. She stopped screaming when she recognized Mike. The cleaner she would always flirt with every morning on her way to school. What is this place? she asked. Her eyes were sunken red and they rummaged all over the room. Mike thought he was seeing a ghost. The lady that usually funnily conversed with him wasn't the one he now tried to calm down. Her hair looked rough and pulled and the black dress she wore scarcely covered her nakedness. Surprisingly, the room was very well kept. Even the bed linen had not been too roughened. This is your apartment, house 21, Darwin Street, he answered. Is... is... is my car... Outside? Why? Mike was confused. Two crises appeared on, was she running mad? Why did she squint her eyes and search the house as though she expected something unexpected to pop up? Is it? She asked. Yes, ma'am. Your navy blue Nissan Primera is quietly parked outside. She felt relieved heaved a sigh and looked away from the questioning sphere of Mike. She knew he was confused, but she was more confused. Could the house be haunted? How could I have found myself back on the bed? The car reappeared outside. What was the creaking sound all about? Were there ghosts? The party? Andrew? Did he notice my absence? Wait, the mirror. Her eyes caught a glimpse of the mirror. It showed the reflection of a six-foot-tall Mike bent beside her bed and staring right down at her face. 
His yellow overall was immaculately clean as always. It's all a dream. It's all a dream. Janet tried to convince herself. She felt a banging in her head and her feet hurt so. What is today? She asked. October the 21st. She tried to move her body and felt a burning pain in her chest. Mike readjusted himself to give her space to move. Do you need help? He reached out his hand to support her, but she declined. Then she lifted herself from the bed, took her car keys from the bedside table, and slipped her shoes on. Where are you going to? Mike asked from behind as he watched her leave the room. I'm leaving. I just can't leave here anymore. 